puny white bodies and these big large eyes. We kind of have a picture of what these things are supposed to be like. Creatures science refuses to recognize. But new technology makes us question what is real. If our eyes see it. Back away from the girl. If our cameras capture it. Does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction. Science meets legend. Where nightmares come to life. Lost Tapes, Alien. In the spring of 2008, astronaut Captain Miranda Bach returned from her final space mission. Soon after her arrival, a state trooper pulled her over for driving erratically. She appeared to be in extreme pain and was speaking incoherently. Officers brought her to the local VA hospital for evaluation, where she was placed under the care of psychiatrist Dr. Lee Morris and internist Dr. Rebecca Damon. On the surface, the case didn't appear to be so unusual, but the next 24 hours would reveal the startling source of Captain Bach's affliction and subject both patient and doctors to a harrowing and deadly ordeal. These are the tapes. She was declared 5150. Police brought her in for a 72-hour psych observation. Prior to the suicide attempt, she was complaining of unbearable skin irritation and abdominal pain. You want a full workup? Yeah, I've got to rule out any physical causes before I finalize my psychiatric evaluation. Anything else I need to know about her? Believe it or not, she's an astronaut. Captain Miranda Bach, Payload Commander, Mission T258, Mission Debriefing, June 16, 2008, 0800 hours. The mission to release a military satellite was a success. However, an off-nominal event occurred during an extravehicular activity repair. While performing the EVA with Mission Commander Madison, we passed through a cloud of comet dust. A nominal amount of this dust entered the STS. Upon investigation, scientists discovered that this dust contained a type of unknown spore. After analysis, determined the spores were inert and it posed no danger. My crew and I were released from quarantine. None of us have experienced any adverse side effects from this exposure. I certainly haven't. In fact, after this debriefing, I'm really looking forward to heading home to Minnesota for a little R&R. It is very likely that inevitably you will get life on other planets because there are probably lots and lots of other planets that have the right conditions for that sort of thing to happen. The universe is so large and contains so many star systems and has so many planets that there must be other planets out there that have conditions that are similar enough to Earth to allow life to arise there. We should expect that when we find life elsewhere, it will resemble life we know on Earth if the basic physical properties under which they evolved are at all similar. So we might find something that looked like an insect that would probably be 
very functionally equivalent to what we see in insects on Earth. Some of the reports have been, just not of the creatures like a man-like creature, but of other kinds of little animals, like an, a large ant of some sort, or um, uh, other reptiles, things of that nature. So there have been reports of all types, of not just humanoid type. One of these days, I'm hoping that we'll find out for sure. Maybe we're afraid to find out, I don't know. Captain Bach, Rebecca Damon. Dr. Morris asked me to come in and take a look at you. So how are you feeling? Are these really necessary? Oh, I'm sorry, but they are. I'm just gonna go ahead and look at your eyes. So are you feeling any pain anywhere? Yeah, my shoulder hurts a lot. Right here? Mm-hmm. How long has this been here? What is it? That's a nasty rash. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, listen to your heart, okay? Is everything okay? I think we have been visited by extraterrestrial beings. I also think that many of our experiences of encounters with alien creatures, even abductions by them, may be with beings who are very close to our world. In the early days of July 1947, there was an explosion in the midst of a thunderstorm which scattered debris somewhere between Corona and Roswell, New Mexico. Now, Roswell was actually the site of an air base, and it was called into action as part of the, uh, the recovery effort. The debris was loaded up, not only the debris, but, but our understanding is alien bodies as well, and taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The military on July 8th changed the story from saying they had recovered a flying saucer to they had recovered um, the remains of a weather balloon. The Barney and Betty Hill case is the first major case of missing time and abduction. The Hills were driving late at night on their way back to their home in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Then this craft came down. According to Betty, they had been taken aboard this craft and given medical examinations. Skeptics tried to debunk them, but they stuck to their story. What Dr. Damon didn't reveal to Captain Bach was that she detected two distinct heartbeats. Blood work conclusively determined that she was not pregnant. However, her chest x-ray showed another anomaly. Look at this x-ray. What is that, a tumor? It's inconclusive. Stumped by their findings, the doctors began to suspect that there might be some kind of organism inhabiting Captain Bach's body. Parasites are organisms that have a close relationship with a host, and in that relationship, the parasite will benefit while the host will suffer. Some estimates put the percentage of parasites up to 50% of all the world's species. I'm not sure if it's quite that high, but definitely a substantial proportion of the world's species are parasites. In some ways, humans make a great host for parasites. They're large-bodied, so they can support a high load of parasites and still survive and go on with their daily life. They also are highly social, and so there's a lot of contact from human to human, so the parasites can spread from person to person. It's possible and plausible that some of these aliens might be parasitic in nature. They might need to feed off of us in some way. Over the next several hours, Captain Bach's skin condition worsened considerably. Alarmed by this dramatic turn, the doctors ordered additional tests. Hey, Captain, how are you? Fine. Now I'm just gonna take a little tissue sample from you today. What's wrong with you? So I'm gonna get you out of here. Uh, it might hurt a little bit, so hold still. Okay. What happened? I don't... Ah! What's going on? You don't 
don't remember. <laughs> no. What happened? The patient is now displaying a severe case of atopic eczema. The rash is now covering her entire torso, including her extremities. I'm wondering if it could be some type of mutated parasite. Lee, this is like tissue I've never seen before. What the hell is that thing? I have no idea. I've ordered her transferred to a specialized facility in the morning. We also have cases of parasitoids that will ultimately end up killing the host. The eastern cicada killer wasp is a good example of a parasitoid. These wasps will capture cicadas and paralyze them with their venom. Uh, the mother will lay a single egg on the paralyzed cicada and then bury it. The host stays alive. The venom doesn't kill the host, but it uh, keeps it alive. And the eggs eventually hatch and in a pretty grotesque way, eat the body of the host. Security guard Alzado called in an emergency ward lockdown. They and all other hospital personnel would have only two minutes to evacuate the building before the doors would be automatically sealed. It's trying to escape. We've gotta contain it. When an animal is trapped or cornered and doesn't have an avenue for escape, then its last resort is to fight back. And many animals will be aggressive uh, when they can't find an escape route. The worst thing that you can do to a wild animal is to trap it in a corner so it can't get away. Because in that case, what's gonna happen is the animal is gonna fight its way out and it will attack you. They will kill if that's what they have to do to get away. Let's get out of here before... Oh. We're locked in here now! God. All other hospital personnel and patients were able to safely evacuate. But having failed to escape before the lockdown, the doctors and security guard were now forced to wait until authorities arrived at the scene. What are you doing? Kill it. Hey, wait. Wait, wait. Alzado, Alzado wait, 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 Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. What do you see? Yes, he's dead. Oh, oh God, get back. Get out, get out. Get back to the lab. Picked up some sort of space parasite, which, using her body, grew into some sort of 
a creature inside of her, destroyed her flesh and her hardened torso and, 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 and burst forth like some kind of cocoon. And, and now that thing is out there. How do we know that thing can't get out of the building? Uh, building's on lockdown. It, it, it can't get away. Everything's locked in. Oh, what is that? Uh, acid. We, we might need a weapon. Okay. You hear that? Did she? Wait. Okay. Okay. Oh. 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 All records surrounding the incident were confiscated and classified by the U.S. government. The official causes of death for Captain Bach, Dr. Morris, and security guard Alzado remain a mystery. The alien creature has never been found. However, there are unofficial reports of spores similar to those found on Captain Bach's spacecraft that have been detected as far away as South America. This information as well as the videotape images from the VA hospital, leads us to ask the disturbing question, do they live among us? online more monsters more experts more video animalplanet.com slash lost tapes